Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. A while back one of you guys said, uh, could we have a shop tour? Well, sure. I like shop tours too. I like looking at other people's shops, figuring out how they did something. Maybe I can borrow an idea or something. There were a couple of things that brought me around to having a shop tour. One, I cleaned the shop. Also because I got the file sharpening videos done, I thought, okay, what's my next one? As I was sitting in the living room last Friday morning, I got a phone call. It was an old customer. He asked me if I could come down and help him. So that's the reason for cleaning the shop. A friend of mine said, you always want to put your tools away clean. You want to have everything ready so when you do need it, you can come back and find everything. Well, you could see from the videos that the shop was getting pretty cluttered. And since I'm going to be gone for a while, I wanted to have it cleaned up so that when I come back, I'll be able to start up again. Yeah, I'm going to be gone for a while. I'm going down to Goshen tomorrow. I'm going to have a meeting in the afternoon to see what the scope of the project is. Last time it was about four months. And it took a lot of work. So I'm imagining that uh, they're not going to call me unless they got something big. What does that mean for you guys? Well, it means that I won't be doing videos every day. I'll be doing them when I can. Will that be every week, once a month, or when I get the project done? I don't really know. Sometimes projects take me uh, across the country. Who knows? We'll just have to see what happens. Well, I got the shop cleaned up and you guys said you wanted a shop tour. It's not perfectly clean. Most of the things are where I can find them and I've swept the floors. Put away a few things, got a few things organized. It's better than what it was. Is it perfect? Never going to be perfect, guys. There's always a project waiting in the wings. And if there's not, Mother Nature decides that something comes crashing down on my truck and there's a project. But let's just take a quick look around the shop and I'll show you what I've got. First thing you see when you walk into the shop is the uh, editing desk. And yeah, that's a mess. <laughs> Haven't cleaned that up yet. That's going to take a little bit more work. I've got to set up for another job. Off to the left, that's where I've got the first tool cabinet that I bought. Yeah, that's a tool cabinet. It's all set up to hold drills. It's got all these little square pockets in that one board. And there were chisels along the bottom, but the chisel rack was not anything that I trust. So right now it's it's basically holding drills. I've got all kinds of drills in that cabinet. As we go down the wall, we walk into clamp land. I have a policy. If you don't know what to get me for Christmas, holidays, Father Day, whatever, clamps. You can never have too many clamps. Now, I'm bordering on the more clamps than what I need, but it's never too many because you don't know what you're going to need tomorrow. I've used these clamps to build a barn. We put 20 foot long pieces of pipe in there and held the framework of the, of the siding together so that we could take this old barn that was uh, built in 1891 and pull it back square and get the siding put on it in a reasonable fashion. Yeah, we used these in uh, 1993. A lot of work. Ryan was a little guy. Then Come on down the way, and here's the C-clamps. This rack was in my old shop. That used to hang on a cross beam that went across the ceiling. Uh, it worked quite well. It was a lot higher. And I could reach higher at the time. I was a whole inch taller. Up above there is the first crosscut saw that I ever bought. We were coming home from a vacation trip over in South Haven. And as we drove through a little town, they had an antique shop. Lydia always has liked antique items. And I do too, but I never really collected that many tools until I saw this hanging on the wall. I said, wow, got that big workshop. That would look great on the wall. Never even thinking I would use it. It was just something that was going to look neat on the wall. I paid the magnificent price of $10 for it because who wanted two-man crosscut saws? Everybody had chainsaws. I brought it home, hung it on the workshop wall. And it stayed there for about 15 years until we moved. Now, that was the uh, seed. Because I had that, 
then I got other things and more things and more things. I lived in a farm that was built in 1891. Uh, the guy who owned it was a pack rat. And the family apologized for not having the barns all cleaned out before they left. Well, we moved in from a brand new tri-level over in Quincy to this 1891 farmhouse. So I said, okay, fine, That's I'll have to clean some stuff up. There's a lot of stuff to haul to the dump. Well, as I got to looking at it, it looked more and more interesting, and I just kept it. Went on the wall underneath the crosscut saw. Now this conglomeration of junk, well, actually, bits and pieces of projects yet to be done. This is the stuff that I use almost constantly. There's oil and glue and wrenches and screwdrivers and tool pouches and extension cords, uh, all kinds of stuff here. And that's the things that I want to just get with a, just a step or two to get. Then across the way from the storage shelves, this is the sick bay for drills. This is where everything that needs work comes. Some of the stuff probably will never make it past uh, being spare parts, but you never know what might come in the door to match the piece that you already have. I also have the big clamps up here. These are something that I use all the time. One person working alone, it's always nice to have one-handed clamps. You can hold with this hand, clamp with that one. Now this was my second antique purchase. There's a little antique shop just south of Battle Creek. We stopped there on our way home from the mall. We used to take Ryan to the mall and, and walk around and buy things. It was the 90s. Well, I looked at it and I thought, well, that's kind of cool. They had a price on it of $50. Well, $50 at the time wasn't that much money. But I said, you know, it's missing the chuck. He said, Okay, I think I paid 25 for it. It's been a long time ago. I didn't keep the receipts at the time. Now I do. It's all tax deductible. I put this up in the workshop. There was a center post in the middle of the floor that I put up to hold up the second story. Yeah, it was an old barn. Really needed some help. Mounted it there, and Ryan loved it. He was about six. He would come out and crank this handle just to hear it go. Always kept the drill bit in it and a piece of wood there because that way he could crank on it and watch the piece of wood get drilled. His earliest tool to get checked out on, hand crank drill press. And for you guys that want to know, this is a the Silver Manufacturing Company, Salem, Ohio, USA. This is the number 523 and it does a lot of cool things. Self-feeding. No wonder Ryan liked it. I dropped this off the back of the truck when we moved here. Broke that flywheel and had to put it all back together again. It's not quite perfect but it's close. Good enough. It's a flywheel. Down on the floor is another post drill. That one's missing the table, the beam, and the clamp for the bottom of the beam. Everything else on it works. It came to me for $15 and I couldn't pass it up. Over there is the miter box. That's one of my favorite tools also. I have a lot of favorite tools. That miter box clamps into the workbench, into the vise, and I use it for a lot of work down here. Now I have a DeWalt, but it's out in the garage because it makes a lot of dust. I mean, dust flies everywhere. Down here in the basement, I don't want to have dust all over the place, so hand tools make dust, but it falls straight down. It doesn't fly. Now as we go along the wall, Now as we go through the shop, and I've got a lot of lights on because it's hard to see if you don't have a lot of lights on. Most of the time when I'm working, I'll have one light on over the bench because this generates a lot of heat. That's 1500 watts in here and that's the size of a small heater. 
I have air conditioning in the house. It's really nice to have air conditioning working down here in the summer. Heated in the winter, air conditioned in the summer. It's great. The pegboard I put up, oh, I don't know, uh, four years ago. Been adding to it on and off, rearranging it because it's pegboard. Pegboard sounds cool and it's kind of nice, but it's hard to really organize it, especially if you're trying to put up old tools. Now, if I was hanging postcards, it'd be great. 500, 600 pounds of tools on this wall. You start pulling the pegs right out of the wall. So I've had to reinforce it a couple of times and redesign things. Down here at the end of the bench, this is where I have the saws in process. These are the ones that uh, they may be partially cleaned. They may just be sitting there. I had them scattered all over the place, piled on shelves. I still got a batch back in the storeroom. But I decided I needed to have some place so that I could see them and remind me to work on them. Otherwise, out of sight, out of mind, they'd just lay there forever. They'd end up in the same shape as they were when I got them. Some guy had them laying on a shelf in his garage and they laid there for 50 years till he died. I don't want to do that. I also have the hammer rack. Now the hammer rack's a bit odd because I have a lot of hammers. You use a lot of hammers. You use different hammers for different jobs. So I have a lot of hammers. And I have the grinders down here at the end of the bench. This is kind of the power tool into the shop because I do have power tools. Uh, who doesn't? I mean, I've got to have something that I can do things with. This is the uh, buffing wheel and the wire brush that does a lot of the rust removal and kind of clean up on jobs. Scout Crafter has several more devices for polishing than I do. I see he's got one or two buffing wheels. He's got uh, at least three wire wheels. I get by with just one. Most of my work is hand work down here. I only use the wire wheel when it gets to the point where it's just going to be a waste of time to try and do it by hand. The grinder, I've got this set up with a coarse wheel on this end and a fine sharpening wheel on the other end. Shape the tools here, sharpen them over there. Now that's only for setting bevels and making sure that everything is square and straight. Uh, most of the work that I do for sharpening I do by hand because it's easy. Once you've got the bevel set, all you got to do is knock the edge off and it's perfect. You don't have to have everything polished to mirror bright. Yeah, it's okay if that's what you like to do. I just don't personally like rubbing a piece of metal across the stone that much. I've done it. I got paid for it for five years working at Borg Warner. Polishing steel is just not my bag anymore. This gives you a view of the whole wall. This is the end wall of the shop. This is where the original workbench was when I moved here. This workbench was about that high and came out about that far. I couldn't reach the wall without standing on a ladder. I'm six foot tall. The guy who owned the house before me must have been a really big guy. I don't know how he managed these duck pieces of ductwork because much higher, I'd be busting my head against him. But I took his piece of, but I took his workbench and cut it down, reshaped it, reassembled it, and it's a very nice workbench. It's solid. Well, it's got probably a good 300, 400 pounds of steel sitting on top of it and another couple hundred pounds in toolboxes underneath it. Then I'm sitting on the floor are the really heavy toolboxes. I don't like toolboxes because things get in them and they stay there. If you can't see them, you don't use them. This side is the wood lathe. That's a delta that my wife bought me a long, long time ago. And I made a lot of bowls on it. I really got into bowls for a while. This is the metal turning lathe. The South Bend 9C workshop lathe has the least amount of power on it. It's a flat belt drive. You can change out the chucks and have all different kinds of chucks on it. But the only way to change the thread settings on it is to open this door, physically unbolt the gears, change the gears on it, change the gear ratio, and that changes the speed of the cross feed. This lathe will cut anywhere from four threads per inch on up. You can get adaption for it to let it cut metric threads, but really don't see the need. This area is kind of a tail end, Charlie. I don't do a whole lot of wood turning, so things tend to get piled up on it. 
It's also the place where the power. To, it's all the. It's also the place where the breaker box is. I try and keep that open, but for right now, I wanted to have the floor cleared, so I kind of shoved stuff in there. This all comes out so that I can have access to the power panel. Back in the back corner here are all the Morse taper drills for the South Bend lathe. It's a little awkward getting to them, but it was the easiest place to have them close by. This area here we call the tool wall, for obvious reasons. It's the latest change to the shop. I decided that the pegboard, remember pegboard has like 600 pounds of stuff on it. Most of this stuff hung on that pegboard before I moved it over here. Decided that I wanted to have some place where I could work, do woodworking. So I made a woodworking bench. Then I set this piece of plywood up on the wall. I saw Matthias Wandel, and I probably got his name pronounced wrong, but you know, he never says it. I got an idea from Matthias Wandel to put up a piece of plywood and then just mount different uh, mounting pieces on here to hold all the various tools. This worked very well. Uh, as I go along and have a little extra time, I uh, make a new one, hang something up here whenever I can. I'm trying to condense all the tools down to the point where they're all accessible in here. Uh, some things are still awaiting a home. This nice little Norland hatchet. I got it because uh, Wrangler Star got one. So when I went through an antique shop and saw one sitting on a shelf, I said, mine, because it was ridiculously cheap. That's how I operate, right? I haven't made a hanger for the Norlin hatchet. It should go here, perhaps. Nested in behind that plum Boy Scout hatchet. That would be a good place for it. That'll have to happen when I have more time. Then I have the breast drills and the egg beater drills and the... Uh, bracing bits. Mounted the lathe tools up there. These are all marking gauges and some lathe tools are mounted on the wall also because it's right here next to the lathe. Like I said, I don't do much wood turning right now. I always think, oh, that'd be fun to do, but then jobs take over and there's a lot of stuff to take care of. One of them is it's summertime. I need a new screen. When we bought the house, this screen was in the basement. We put in central air because it's central air. Who doesn't want central air? So I thought I didn't really need the screens. But there's a lot of times that you just want to have a window open. Springtime, weather's nice. You don't need the air conditioning. You want to open a window and let the air blow through the house. You don't want to have the bugs come in. And in. I need a screen. So I stopped at Menards, got a screen kit, and I'm going to replace the screen on this. Now there's the water softener. Takes up a lot of room out of, out of the workshop, but no better place for it. We come around here, and this is the back side of the shelves that you saw earlier. I have some storage units on here. These storage units sound like a great idea, but they end up collecting crap that you never see, so you don't use it. I'm a little more inclined to use stuff out of that than most people. I see this as the saving me a trip to the hardware store. Down below are a bunch of hand drills and sanders and scroll saws and polishers and buffers and drills and just all kinds of things down there. There's better ways to do that but I haven't done it yet. That takes us pretty much all the way through the workshop down here. Now there are other parts to it. This is the exercise area. I got this weeder machine on the DIY exchange and I use it when I'm waiting for the videos to upload. Hidden in behind the furnaces of the storeroom. Not taking you back there. It's dangerous. There's a lot of stuff piled up. I have shelves and the shelves are somewhat organized but it's just a pile of stuff. That's a shop tour of the basement shop. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, 
or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. And I may be busy for a while, but I'll get back to you as quick as I can. Thanks for watching.